and this is how we welcome you to Artistic Spot, a show about art, talent and entrepreneurship where you are also the artist. In Artistic Spot, we're actors over movies, singers over musicals and writers over books. Today we have a very special guest, actually not one, we have five guests and we are recording from Studio 244 at Fabo on their first Friday and Saturday with artists from Creande and now sitting right next to me is Patricia Byron, yes, thank program you. manager for the drawing painting. and paint, painting and drawing at Creande yes. and also you are an, an art instructor. I am. So Patricia, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for having us. What an honor, really a pleasure for having us here. It's our pleasure and especially after seeing everything you have done in the program at Creade. But can you tell us a little bit about the story of all the art pieces that we're seeing today featured at Studio 244 at Fable? Yes, absolutely. My pleasure. So this evening you're viewing the work of Creade Studio, um, the studio artist and also the fellowship student. So it's a program that Crealde has, and it's had. Um, it started in 1978, um, and then the newest would be the Studio Artist Program, and that started in 19, um, I believe, in the night in the late 90s. So it's a program where um, artists um, are mentored. Um, they they receive free classes um, while putting in around 32 hours a week of. of um, uh, facilitating um, the teachers in the classes, helping um, art festivals, a lot of tasks, um, working in the office at Cree all day, just a lot. And it's, it's a wonderful program. I actually started um, being a fellowship student at Cree wow. all day. And then once you do that, um, you can submit your portfolio and your classes and everything that you've done artistically mm -hmm. to um, to become a studio artist at Cree all day and that's more that's for the more advanced student and they don't have to put in all the work that the um, fellowship students have have done um, but that's what they do and uh, it's kind of like priming and prepping the artist to to kind of go out into their own artistic journey professionally. Of course. And that's a program that's only if they want to do that. And it's a wonderful program. And what's next for them after they have been a fellowship student and then fellowship artist and then a studio artist? Yes. What's next for them? Which are their options for those people watching our show and listening to us everywhere podcasts are available? What can you tell them if you're looking forward on being a fellowship student or a fellowship artist and then a studio artist, what's the next step for me if I decided to pursue a career yes. with Creality? If they want to be a second year studio artist, they can continue by um, submitting a portfolio again. And it's not only open to Creality students, it's also open to any Central For Florida artists that would like to participate in this wonderful program. Um, so after that, let's say they apply again, um, they would continue going on and doing the same tasks and um, showing their work. Um, in my case, I, I mean, the best example I can give is what I did. I just started doing um, a lot of events and, and shows. It really depends on where you want to go. We've had some artists that have gone on to become um, authors and illustrators, and some have left Cree all day, and I love it so much I've stayed. Um, and teaching. So if you want to be a teacher, a lot of our, um, our studio artists and um, fellowship students are actually um, instructors That's outside wonderful. of Cree all day. And you'll learn more about that during the podcast. Of course. Um, but I would say to sum it up, it would be to go on to be more of a professional artist and yes. do lots of shows. <laughs> yes, which is And great. exhibits, yeah. What's your biggest takeaway after being part of Creality for such a long period of time and starting as a fellowship artist and then doing this right now? What's the message that you can tell our audience regarding your position and your mission in life as an artist that can maybe resonate with everybody watching this? right now? That's a wonderful question. A loaded question, but a wonderful <laughs> one. What's the takeaway, the biggest takeaway? I, um, I feel like my mission, if, if somebody said what, it, you know, like you're asking now, I would say mentoring and helping because I don't believe in holding back any information. I know a lot of artists say, well, I wish I knew more about this and that. I am like an open book. I'm, I, I, I love to help people. If you succeed, 
I succeed in watching you in, in, the, in, the, in the bleachers or <laughs> in the backstages of all your art shows and stuff. I enjoy watching my, my artists, my friends just show and, and succeed. And that's, that's what I love. That's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, I love exhibiting, I love painting, and I love um, being around my, my group of artists, friends. But the best thing is like just watching them grow. And we have a lot of coffee dates and lunch dates and uh, more to come, <laughs> especially after this podcast. Um, but I really enjoy the, the camaraderie and the friendships of this. And that's probably my biggest takeaway because the shows will be there. Yes. The art and creating will be there, but the friendships are, for me, super important. If you were able to choose one specific time in your career in Creada that has been the highlight of it, which one will that be and why? The high, wow, that's a great question. The highlight, there's so many, really. Um, the highlight, I really enjoyed um, the moment that I got invited to teach or to do a workshop at Epcot, and I really enjoyed teaching that workshop. Um, a room of 50 people, maybe 100, and they were, they were tourists, they were just guests, and wow. that was really cool, like to, to, to do an art class with people on vacation. That yeah. was one highlight. That's amazing. Yeah. Now, Patricia, if you have any people watching us and listening to us that would like to be part of the program, mm -hmm. where can they reach you? Where can they contact you on social media so we can have them and give can them I all show that this? information? Crealde, <laughs> here's our program guide. Um, so, crealde.org. Um, if you Google us, um, we're all on social on all the social media platforms. We're on Twitter. We're on Instagram, we're on Facebook. So um, that's the best way to find us, creolday.org. Thank you, Patricia. And we're located in Winter Park, Florida. So. Winter Park, Florida, and you can follow all that information right here. Yeah. Thank you, Patricia, for being part of our story Thank in Artistic you. Spots. Thank and now you. we're moving forward to get to know yes. the artists that Thank are being so part much. of this story and this Creolday exhibit at Fabo. Thank you. As part of this Creality exhibit at Studio 244 at Fago, now sitting right next to me, it's Diane Stapleton, studio artist. Hi, Hi Diane. Thank Hi. you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you for having me, Jose. It's amazing. It's a treat. Thank you. <laughs> it's amazing to see all the wonderful masterpieces that are actually part of this exhibit. Can you tell us a little bit about your background as an artist? Ah, well, my background as an artist is actually as a theater designer. I was a set designer for a long time. And, uh, then I had a family, so I put that aside, did a, few, did a few projects here and there, and then decided once my daughter grew up that I better figure out what to do. <laughs> so, so I called up Crealde, and that was three, four years ago almost, and that was when I had my first class. What has been your biggest takeaway from Crealde as being a studio artist? Well, my biggest, my biggest, biggest takeaway is that art truly is for everybody. For me, because you have to apply to be a fellowship student and make your way through this program, and when the, the application says fellowship is for um, if you want to start exhibiting your work, and I just said, that's me. So, and I filled out the application and uh, took started taking classes actually and ended up in Patricia's class a couple of years ago and uh, and then I worked with her for about a year and a half helping her on Saturday mornings for the kids classes Wow yeah yeah so you so. said something really beautiful about art which is that art is actually for everybody oh yeah what are the stories that you tell through the art that you create my my stories um, my stories are largely spiritual. I did these crosses here. Beautiful. And um, a lot of my work, I don't necessarily know where it's headed when I <laughs> make that first stroke of paint. Um, but it, you know, I kind of massage it and it seems to turn into something. It's magic, really. And, um, and then I just start pushing it. But really, and for me, it's a, um, a joyful thing to do. It's not always easy, but, <laughs> but, it, but it is fun. 
It is. That's true. Yeah. What's next for Diana, the artist? Um, well, I think. <laughs> I think the next thing for me is to post more regularly on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> and speaking about Instagram, what is your Instagram handle so people can follow you? Oh, my Instagram handle is Diane Stapleton Artist. So make sure to follow yeah. Diane Stapleton yeah. Artist so you can see everything that you do, Diane. Well, and my where you might at this point see everything is my website is dianestapleton.art. Thank you, Diane, for joining us, for Thank sharing you, your Jose. story, and congratulations for being part of this exhibit. Well, it's been a treat. Thank you. Okay. Now, Katie Collins, studio artist at Creale, sitting right next to me. Thank you for joining us Thank you. for Thank episode you. 103 of Artistic <laughs> Spot. So now, Katie, talk to us a little bit about your experience as an artist and in Creale. Um, well, um, just starting at Creale has been um, I've just learned so much. So right from the beginning, um, I wanted to take this program for a long time. And when I began it, it was just everything I needed and everything I wanted and everything I dreamed of. It was just helped me so much in so many ways. It's helped me grow as an artist and learn everything I needed to learn, really. So when you mentioned that it has helped you grow in so many ways, are there any specifics in art and how art has helped you? Well, before I've always been um, painting by myself and not had any lessons, so I was like winging it basically until I got proper classes and it's just really helped me learn the basics and it's helped me um, really develop a style and learn about color and proportion and everything you need to learn as an artist. So it's. Um, Obviously, you can never learn it all, but I'm well on my way to feeling like I'm um, really developing my own my own style. And what's the own style yeah. that represents you as an artist right now? Well, I like to paint a lot of things because I like I get inspired by a lot a lot of different things. So, but when I paint portraits, I feel like that's probably my main thing. And children, because I feel like I just as I'm painting the portrait and they look back at me in the picture and it's just really, um, you really feel like a sense of achievement and, um, you know, when you feel like they're really coming to life, you know. It's amazing. So Katie, where can people follow you and see your work? Um, I am on Instagram, Katie Collins Paintings and Facebook and also I have a website with katiecollinspaintings.com. What's next for you in Creale? Um, well, um, I'm just trying to keep growing and selling and developing, um, really building up an email and email list, so <laughs> connecting with more people. So I've been really getting out in the community and uh, connecting with more and more people so that I am able to grow as an artist and um, continue my career, really. Thank you, Katie, yeah. for sharing your stories Thank and artists you. and artistic spots. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. Thank you for having me. <laughs> now, Paula Lupton, fellowship student at Crayola, sitting right next to me. Thank you. Well, thank you for having me. Thank you for being part of our story. Um, so I started my fellowship journey uh, officially in March of this year. I've been going to Creole for the past couple years. I started off in photography and taking a lot of workshops, and I saw Patricia as well as Diane with in the art journaling class in October and that's what kind of switched me into the fellowship program so I'm a therapist and I work for crisis work and I was taking a lot of art as ways to help people express what's going on when they can't find the words that they can use different mediums and then Patricia and everyone embraced me with open arms and I became a fellowship student and now a few months later I'm here how has that experience been for you after working in the crisis program and helping others to share their story through art? What can you tell the audience now on the importance of storytelling and express through colors what words cannot tell or express? Well, I'm going to say it's the most important thing you can do. For me, also, this is my own journey from coming off of the crisis unit during COVID. Taking colors, telling stories, sometimes it's hard to put words and to explain, just to talk to someone, this is what I've done, but you can actually bring someone along with you 
and those brief snippets of what I've experienced. And you can actually have a great emotional release that you can take everything you have pent up or built up or your frustrations and you can take those colors and just put it down on the page and actually feel a lot better because you got it out. So now, Paula, you've been a student, a fellowship student for such a short period of time since March 2021. What's next for you? Well, luckily right now I work with Patricia. When Diane became a studio artist, I got to slide in and work on the Saturdays nice. with her. Um, so I'm going to, I have the next year and a half, so I'm going to continue learning my craft, taking abstract classes and, and photography and doing all of that and just really focus on taking everything I have and put, leaving it on the page for right now. That's beautiful. Paula, where can people follow you and see your beautiful artwork? All right, so I am on Instagram as well as Twitter at Mikozil, M-I-K-O-Z-I-E-L. Thank you, Paula, for joining us in Artistic Spot. It has right. been an honor to have you. Thank you, it's an honor to be here. Thank you. And now, from New York City, all the way to Orlando, Ediana <laughs> Gomez, sitting right next to me, fellowship student at Crialde. Ediana, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Can thank you tell you. us a little bit about your experience at Crialde and being a fellowship student. Thank you, Jose, for having me. Um, well, I'm actually the newest fellowship student, as far as I know, <laughs> this year. Um, I became a fellowship student in June of 2021. And um, my journey with Creality started in 2015, wow. when I moved to the area in Winter Park. I, as soon as I saw the school, I knew I wanted to live nearby <laughs> because I've been wanting to take art classes for a long time. So I started taking classes in 2016 once I had a few bag, a few boxes unpacked and um, took some photography, took some oil painting and it wasn't until 2019 that I started working as a volunteer and met Patricia, met all the other fellowship students and just ended up becoming a fellowship student as well. So. That is amazing. You have been a fellowship student since June, which is a mm -hmm. short, short period of time. Mm -hmm. What's next for you? in that pathway to art. What's next for Ediana? Well, I know I have a lot to learn. So I will continue applying the skills that I've been taking so far at the different classes that I've been taking and um, hopefully develop some, you know, a style and develop something that's more um, in tune with my inner spiritual uh, journey. Um, because for me, this is not just something that I've been wanting to do for a long time, but it's also a great way for me to um, just let go and forget of all my work and everything. And um, especially since I have my own business, and that's always, you know, very, it's a tough, yes. tough thing to, to be an entrepreneur working for yourself mm -hmm. for 10 years. So. So now, Ariana, where can the audience follow you and discover the amazing art pieces that you work on? Well, um, very shortly, <laughs> by the time you, you go on Instagram, you should be able to find me at um, Ediana at eyelidstudio.com. Thank you, Ediana, for sharing your story Thank with us you. and for exhibiting here at Studio 244 at Fable Thank with Crialde. Thank you for Isn't having an me. Honor? Thank, Thank you. you. And last but not least, Jasmine Fajuri. Did I s pronounce it well? You did very well. Thank you. So Jasmine, thank you for joining us tonight. Thank you for having me. In Artistic Spot, fellowship students at Crialde. Share with our audience a little bit of your story as an artist. So I started my fellowship around November 20 of like 2020. Um, I always had an interest in art, but I, it was like on and off. Art was like kind of devalued in my family, so I didn't <laughs> develop it a whole lot. Um, and then I, around sometime mid-2020 last year, I had to stay at a hospital, and it was kind of lonely. Um, but even though I had trouble talking, I would like doodle a lot. And so I ended up drawing five of the patients' like portraits in this hospital, wow. and it was really nice to have that way to like connect to people where I couldn't really do it with words so um, it was shortly after that that I was like fine I'm gonna take art classes again and now I'm in the fellowship program and I'm here and how your experience has been in Crealde like getting in since November 2020 and how your life has changed ever since you start doing art it's been incredible like I've finally been able to find the source of happiness from like within myself as opposed to outside of myself 
And having people around me that help me to like develop my skills and who like really believe in me has been more than incredible. If someone is looking at your art piece, what can you tell them and what's the story that you tell? I know art is very subjective and it's in the eye of the beholder, but what can you tell them when you're sitting painting in a canvas? What's the story behind Jasmine's art? That's kind of hard to say. Um, a lot of time the images will come into my head and I don't fully understand where they came from. If people ask for explanations, I just kind of leave it to them to do that. Like it's getting something out of me even if I don't know what it is. Where can people follow you, Jasmine? So I am on Instagram at inkbat, that is I-N-K-B-A-T, um, and yeah. Awesome. So if you were able to give a message to our audience, looking to us on social media, YouTube, and everywhere podcasts are available, since you're the last one, what can you tell them and why? Go pick up a pencil, start creating something, even if you don't think you can do it, just, just do it. it. It makes life so much better and just don't be scared of it. Thank you, Jasmine, for being part of our story in Artistic Spot. And if you're having a piece of art in Studio 244 at Fable with Grealde, thank you. We're honored to have you. Honored to be here. Thank you. And for those of you, our audience, don't forget to tune us back in next week for another episode of Artistic Spot. And don't forget to follow us on Instagram, RJJ Design, and Facebook, JJ Arts and Design, and subscribe to our YouTube channel, Artistic Spot. And don't forget to tune us back in next week for episode 104 where you are also the artist.